Hey Simonix, what's up? Welcome to a new quick win on multiple side menus with Ionic. So we will go back to the basics because I noticed that a lot of you have problems with the routing stuff, the tab bar, the navigation. So we will focus on this aspect today as I also discovered that it is kind of tricky. So we will have a tab bar and we want to show different side menus on the different tabs of the tab bar. So let's do this. For this tutorial, I actually started with the tabs layout since um, this would require a lot of creation of new tabs upfront and I don't think that's important for now. So go ahead with the general tabs layout and then create four new pages. So uh, on tab one and on tab two, we will create a sidebar and each sidebar or side menu will have two items that we want to show. So uh, actually we will do it once for the first tab and then we can basically copy the code for the second tab. So um, right now our application, uh, the standard Ionic tab bar looks like this. So let's get started with tab one and we can basically get rid of all this stuff in here and we will type and we will start with an ion split pane. Um, because that's always nice to use uh, when you're using an ion menu since it automatically closes the menu or keeps it open on bigger screens. So then the ion menu which needs a content ID that we will set in a second and also since we're using multiple menus a menu ID will make sense as well. In terms of the menu it's actually pretty straightforward. So you got the header area of the menu and then you got the content area in which you can have whatever buttons uh, you can define them in your TypeScript file or I will just do it in here and I will wrap them inside an ion menu toggle which is always a good idea since this will automatically close the uh, menu but we will also pass auto hide uh, to false since um, otherwise on a bigger screen it will try to close it as well I think so this will keep our menu open uh, with a split pane all right that's uh, could be right around everything and we also use the menu ID which we'll just set to first so uh, we will use this menu ID in a few places and that's actually really important to keep uh, in order with the two menus that we want to implement or perhaps even more that you got. So then we got finally the items which will uh, trigger a page in our menu and also the uh, router direction route always makes sense for a uh, site menu item since you don't push pages you basically replace the main content area and I also want to use the router link active to show which item is currently active so that will make things a bit clearer and then we go ahead with an eye on label let's say this one is our home page and then we can just grab this one and say this is the news page. Also, let's quickly bring in our styling. So we see we got all the uh, pages in place. And to our global SCSS, I will just append the rule for our active item. So this will just give it a little border. Um, perhaps we can also use another color just to separate it from the header. But that should be fine. So right now um, we have the template for the menu in place, um, but we have no content element to listen for. So our menu isn't complete yet. Uh, we have the header area, we have the content area inside the menu, but what we don't have is the actual router outlet. So ion router outlet. This is basically the box where the main content is rendered and this needs to have the same ID like the content ID up here. So let's say content and content and to make everything match uh, you should also put it into your split pane. So content ID content. Um, previously we had the main directive here but this is deprecated since Ionic 5 as far as I know so now use the content ID just make it match the ion menu and the ID down here. With that in place we still need to set up our routing. So uh, let's open the tab 1 module 
Perhaps in with Ionic 5, if you generate new pages or with a new CLI, you also have a home routing module. It's not really a huge difference if you have the routing in the tab module or in an external file. It's really just the same. And you will see we can tweak the routing in here as well. Just like you already have the routing in, for example, the tabs routing module, you can define your own routes array. So go back to the tab one module and then we're gonna close this and first of all make it work once again. So instead of just using a very plain router module for child in here, we will now define for the first tab page the menu basically. Since now the tab one page is the basic or the parent component, and within the menu, we can have childs. So replace this simple snippet we got here with routes, the routes up here, and also, of course, import the routes. And then we're gonna close this. So the children of the tab one page are simply the news page and the home page that we created before. So news and home. And therefore we can use path home load children and then the syntax to load it i can't remember it yet so i will just copy it from one page so this is the new load children syntax and then make it match home and home page module same for the second route which is news so news, 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 and the news page module. All right, what we got here now um, is something we need to check out. So the routing happens from top to bottom. It starts in the app routing and you can actually get rid of the automatically generated routes. You don't really need them. So the app will start with a blank path and move into the tabs module. Then if we check out the tabs module, we see that for the blank path at the bottom, we will be redirected to tabs slash tab one. If we then go into the path tabs and the children tab one, we see that the tab one module is loaded. So really just drilling down from top to bottom helps to understand this. And if you then move into the tab one module, we see that we come here with an empty path. So we should also have a little redirect in place because right now, we basically are start on this page and it won't go into our actual um, tab one page. You can't see any menu in here. So we can do it in two places. I'm actually not sure why this redirect isn't working 100%, but it's still required at a later point. So if you leave this out, you will notice at a later point that something is missing. So we will redirect to home with a path match full. But as I said, this path match is not yet enough. And therefore I had to, yeah, it, it, it is working if you go to tabs slash tab one. But if you start with a blank path, you will see that it's not routing to the right page. So therefore you can once again go back to the tabs routing and make this path really hard coded. So redirecting not only to tabs tab one, but also to home. And this will help to display the first page of our site menu within the actual application. And that's what we should see now. If we remove this path and go to the blank path, we're now redirected to this. And we can actually see the home page. And I think we might be able to yeah, pull in this site menu. That's pretty cool so far. But of course, we need the home uh, burger button and a bit more of logic. So let's do this. We can close the tabs routing, the app routing, the global, and we can focus on our tab one page, module, page, uh, TypeScript, and everything else. So the router link for home is normally just home since we're already at the right path and also just news. However, the problem is that with this path, both items, I think, are marked as active. I'm not 100% sure. And also clicking on home doesn't really work. So 
To fix this, you can also simply use the full path in here, which is tabs, tab one slash home. And for the second one, tab, tab one news. You also see the path up here. And perhaps to make things a bit more easy, I can also go to the bigger screen. And now we see we're on tab one. We're able to change between home and news. So that's a standard menu we have now implemented. We can make this a bit smaller uh, and draw it in from the side. Home, come on. I will just add the button since that's also, uh, of course, needed. So go to all the four of your pages, starting with the home page. And then uh, button, or can I just use the menu button automatically? Yeah, that's a nice snippet. Ion buttons, slot start, ion menu button. This button will show if there's a menu and you already see you can specify a menu ID. So again, carefully for home and for news, which we have in tab one, we will use first since this is the ID of our menu. So do it like this in the home page and in the news page. And for account and user, which will this be displayed on the second tab, we have to change the menu now to second. Uh, we haven't added the menu, but that's just to get uh, these pages in place. So account page and user page will have the second menu for their button as a reference. So now we finally have a little burger icon and still we're on tab one. We can move to tab two, tab three. We haven't changed them so far and we can still go back to tab one and select the item and you see now it also has the right link. Okay, that was part or maybe not everything. I think there's still something missing. Perhaps we will, now let's do it right now. Mm. I'm not sure. Now let's let's do it later. I want to show you the problem. <laughs> so let's move to our second tab, in which we will do basically the same thing like we did before, and then we will notice a few problems. So first of all, let's grab the tab one HTML, put it into the tab two HTML, and then move into different IDs that we can change. So. We will change everything just to make sure that nothing is connected in the wrong way. I did this and then it didn't work on a device or something didn't work with a bigger screen. So really make sure that these two tabs and menus and split panes are completely separated by their IDs. So tab two, second content, content ID, second content, and here also second content. And I will give it the menu ID second. And then our menu toggle is also, oops, simply related to second. And then of course, our router links will be different. So this will be tab two, I don't know, user and account, most likely user and account. All right, that's the markup for the menu. Now again, moving into our routes. Copy them from the tab one module, go to the tab two module, paste them in, import the router. And then you see, of course, we have to replace this tab two because that's now the parent component. And within we got the routes user and account. And then the path is user, user, user page. Come on. And this one is account, 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 page, module. And we will redirect to user if we come with an empty path. Again, replace this super simple snippet here with the array we just created. And then we should be able to see two different menus in action. So that's the general ID. And there we go, tab two, we have a different menu. But oops, now we're going back to tab one and the menu is gone. That's also what I thought and I investigated a bit this issue and it appears that if you go into the, ah, uh, come on, now that's gonna be hard to figure out. If you go to the ion menu statements, um, you will actually see that we're on tab one, 
But on the app tab two inside the ion menu, this is still menu enabled. I hope you see this menu enabled. And that's the problem. The second menu on the tab two is enabled, but not on the first tab. I don't know why this is not automatically switching, but we can do this on our own. And what we're going to do is in both the tab two page and the tab one page, we will inject the private menu controller menu controller from Ionic Angular and then within our uh, Ion view will enter. We will use the menu controller to enable the correct menu. So on the tab two page, we want to enable the menu with the ID second. And of course, on the uh, tab one page, we will enable the menu first. So now whenever we switch between the two tabs, the ion view will enter will be triggered. And if we're on tab one, the first menu will be enabled. And if we're on tab two, the second menu will be enabled. And that's what we see right here. Actually, we can also perhaps see it once again with the split pane interface. And then we will move to the next issue. So now we actually have a menu, but it is kind of, I don't know what is broken here right here. We can use it, but it's not how it should look like. And this issue is now related to the split pane. So having two split panes is also a pain at a different position of your body. So you can also disable the menu and uh, you see now it starts to get a bit tricky and I was also kind of annoyed that it's not working out of the box easily with the different IDs, but uh, stick with me, we can get this done. So to tab one page, we will disable the split pane in general if the pane is not enabled. And in the beginning, we will set this to true. But once the um, ion view will, no, that's not how you spell will, ion view will leave. Once the view leaves, we will set our pane enabled to false. And when it enters again, we will set it to true. Very interesting mechanism I came up with here. Uh, we will put this into our tab two page as well. And once again, apply the same logic like we did in tab one to tab two. Uh, I'm sure I've confused you in a lot of ways now, but basically the two really have the same code. Only one is targeting the second and the other one is targeting the first menu. So now finally, um, I messed up something as I don't see anything anymore. Uh, can't bind to disable. Yeah, it's set disabled, of course. Sorry about that. But now, uh, hopefully, we see on a bigger screen menu, we can switch them and we got a menu here and we can go back and got a menu here. I'm so happy at this point. Now, there's one more thing I don't like about this solution and that is that once we are navigating here on tab one to news and we go to tab two and then back to tab one, we're back at home. That's happening because uh, we click on tab one and we're basically redirecting to home anytime. So you could come up with some additional logic to store which menu item was active and then reactivating it. I didn't want to add this to this video because it already uh, required a lot of code, but right now everything works. I tested this on a device as well. It finally worked in the end. So we can switch between them. We got the different menus and everything is working. So I hope you enjoyed this quick win in the beginning of the year. Perhaps we can also have like a routing month. So uh, some themes for our month in which we focus on different aspects. Let me know if you're interested in this. And also let me know if you get any questions about this. Make sure you really separate them. You're using the right content IDs. It is a bit tricky to get this working, but with a solution right now, you should be off to a good start. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, make sure to subscribe for more videos and I will catch you next time. So happy coding, Simon.